tonight's chapter of Hypercosmic Odyssey is the weight of loyalty. It had been just over a week since the roving dawn had returned to Odessa, and Karina had been trying to put the tour behind her. She had debriefed Vasily, Nero, and Howl, gone skydiving and camped with Alexei and Raz, and even met Radley in the Gargantuan de Vry. Despite all, <clears throat> despite all the distractions, Karina couldn't shake the weight of the tour from her shoulders. To try and cope, the young princess had started sneaking small collections of wine from the castle's private cellar to stash away within her bedroom. She knew what she was doing, if not kept under control, could grow into a dangerous and unhealthy habit. But it helped numb the pain and allowed her to relax without burdening anyone. Karina knew she was needed. Or <clears throat> Karina knew she needed to find a better way to cope with her emotions, but with the expectations on her shoulders, she wasn't sure how. Not right now, at least. November sixth, twenty three eighty seven. Now, as Karina walks down the opulent hallway with Ketch and Laszlo at her side, lost in thought, she can't help marvel at the stunning fresco painting that adorns the ceiling above. She'd seen the building's art countless times before, but taking it in now after experiencing firsthand so many other cultures, Karina feels a newfound appreciation. Depicting the history of Odessa and its people, the fresco shows the taming of wild jungles, construction of the Tri-Cities, <clears throat> and the many other triumphs of the planet's past. The colors are vibrant and the detail is extraordinary, with each scene coming to life before the teenager's eyes. The walls of the hallway are adorned with beautiful local statues and paintings, each one more breathtaking than the last. One statue depicts a warrior wielding a sword, his muscular body captured in stunning detail. Another painting shows a group of people celebrating a festival their joy and revelry captured in vibrant hues. As she walks down the hallway, <clears throat> Karina feels a sense of pride in her adopted people and their rich history. Seeing it all laid out before her in such a grand and impressive way makes her even feel more connected to her new home and the people who had welcomed her here into their royal family. As she reaches the end of the hallway and turns the corner leading towards Marquitha's office, Karina can't help but feel grateful for the opportunity to be part of such a rich and vibrant culture. She'd faced untold challenges already for them and expected further difficulties ahead, but she was determined to embrace her duty with the same strength and determination as the Odessan people. And with Ketch and Laszlo at her side, she knows she can face anything that comes her way. The sound of Ketch's familiar sniffing catches the girl's robotic ear, and when she turns around, she can't help but smile as she watches both him and Laszlo examining the beautiful statue with curious eyes. Ketch stands on his hind legs and sniffs, his nose twitching as he takes in all of the different scents. Laszlo is more interested in the sharp tip of the sword, gingerly reaching out a paw to touch the smooth metal. I don't know that she was saying anything. She was just said, you know, enjoy the moment of them being curious. Okay. So as Karina arrives to Marquita's office, she takes a deep breath. Ketch and Laszlo sense the unease, and they kind of like come up towards her behind the from the statue to like join at her, join at her sides. And as she knocks, Marquita says, "Come in." And what does Karina say and or do? She'll go in. Okay. When she opens the door and steps into the room, Ketch and Laszlo follow close behind. Marquita looks up from her desk and smiles at Karina. Hello, dear. It's so good to see you. Have you been readjusting to home? Yes. Yep. Pretty well. I mean, it's kind of odd to be back, but it's good to be back. So I'm you know, glad to be done with the tour for now. Oh, I understand. Trust me. It can be very difficult to balance the demands of your position with the personal struggles that we face. It was hard for me when I first married Vasily's father and moved here, but I hope you know that both you and Raz can always come to me if you need someone to talk to. Thank you. That means a lot. How have you been doing since we've been gone? Oh, so busy. I've been making sure that everything is tip-top shape in the rebuilding of the castle and 
that all of the work effort has been cleared from Lowtown. We're still dealing with troubles in Lowtown. And of course, there's Richmond Colony. So much to do. I mean, you've seen it all. Yeah. How do you feel about Richmond and the, the new rules regarding people's ability to kind of acclimate back into society? Well, I'd been pushing for it for years, and I believe that uh, what my son has done is uh, for the best of the future of these people. And in regards to Richmond, I think it is great. Uh, we were eventually going to need to expand out anyways, so if anything, it just moved that effort forward. That makes sense. Have you had the chance to go out and visit it yet? No, I haven't been yet. Well, you'll have to make sure and get out there soon. It's much different than the Tri-Cities. The people out there have truly made it their own. That's great. Glad to hear it. I was thinking that we could take a walk around the grounds and you could tell me what's been on your mind lately. How have your nightmares been? And go ahead and roll Nightmare. I don't know why I kept pumping shit into... Well, I guess empathy was already high for him. Ugh. All right. So, Does that count as, like, an act? Like, do I have to actually do the panics? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So, um, recently, Karina had a nightmare where she found herself surrounded by a red, sandy mist that seems to swirl and shift around her. She can't see more than a few feet in any direction. She has a feeling of disorientation and vertigo. And as she walks through the mist... Karina begins to hear the sounds of people screaming. She can't see them, but she can hear their moans of pain. It's as if they're trapped in some sort of hellish purgatory where everyone is shrouded in black. A sense of dread washes over her, and suddenly a skull appears in front of the girl, its eyes bleeding with a thick red liquid. The sight is so grotesque and unsettling that she couldn't help but scream. But in the dream, her voice emits nothing but silence. And it flashes back to Markeitha being like, how have your nightmares been? Not great. I'm kind of struggling lately. I don't... I mean, I think I've had one more often than not. How are they on the tour? Do you feel like you've been having more of them since returning to Odessa? I think probably about this... I was having them quite frequently and yeah I don't think she's I don't think she's failed a nightmare since like the first like time so she's been having them I would say if she's consistently having them on game night she's probably consistently having them like between the two so <coughs> she's like have you have you spoken with Dr. Edmonton at all since you've been have, since you've returned? I'm sure he would happily make time for you. I haven't. That's that's a good idea. Would you like me to reach out to his office and see if he's available for something over the next couple of days? Sure. She's like, I'll put it into my calendar, and she like types onto her little like sliver hollow pad thing, and she's like, All right, with that done, would you like to? Go on our walk? Yeah, thank you. And as Karina and Marquita sort of like head out of the office and begin to walk the grounds of the castle, Karina can't help but feel a little suspicious of Marquita. She's not really acting in any kind of malicious way, but as they're having these conversations and talking, just having a little small talk, walking through the hallways, Karina kind of notices just something is a little bit off. So go ahead and roll observation. So... It's very obvious to Krina that Marquita has something else on her mind other than a simple walk and is not telling her what it is. Yeah, she knows her well enough. She'll say something. She'll say, is there something on your mind? Marquita chuckles. She goes, oh, is it that obvious? <laughs> I've never been good at keeping a secret. Uh, I was hoping to show you something special, um, something I built just for you. It's a surprise, she says with a twinkle in her eye but i think you'll like it i'm sure i will if you set it up she was like well it i did set it up but alexi helped you know how much he loves surprises i do know how much he loves surprises 
<laughs> oh god it's an alex a surprise <laughs> oh no um <laughs> Victor pops out like, wait, wait, <laughs> what? I killed him. It was like all a setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole thing was just like another Vasily's tests. <laughs> like, oh god! No, that's not. No, trust me. That would be. She would be. She's not coming back from that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Daphne was very real. Yeah. Finally, the two humans and the two smart almost reach a set of intricately beautiful or intricately designed beautiful glass doors, in the center of which is the Odessan sun symbol. When Marquita opens the door, Karina is shocked to see a beautiful, lush garden filled with colorful flowers and tranquil pools of water, built over the ruins of where the eastern terminator wall used to connect to the castle. Karina can't believe her eyes. Both Ketch and Laszlo excitedly run out into the open air, chasing after butterflies and sniffing flowers. As Karina follows after them, she's met with a gorgeous view. As she gazes over the stone railing to her left, she can see the entirety of the Tri-Cities, and to her right, the everlasting canopies of the Green Demon. Oh, shit. Marquita says, It's a place for you. Well, all of us who call the cathedral our home... To relax and escape from the demands of our positions. A place where our family can find a little bit of peace and solitude. Thank you. I don't know what to say. This is amazing. Oh, it, it was nothing. She just kind of like waves her hand. Like, You're well, I'm sure it's not true. <laughs> How much work went into this? Well, it was it was quite a lot, actually. <laughs> You're right. Uh, Alexei, though, like I said, he helped very much. I, I hired all of the crew and the gardeners, and he helped me pick all of the flowers. He said that he wanted to be very bright and very pretty. Now I'm picturing him, like, what? <laughs> With those, like, magnifying glass. Yes. Glasses. Yes. <laughs> Yes. With a little like Jack Black from Jumanji hat. Yes, yes, yes. Full outfit. He went the yeah. full outfit. Like he has those little short shorts on. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. This is amazing. I don't know what to say. Well, you're welcome, dear. I'm glad you like it. And remember, this is our place. You can come here any time you need to escape from the stress of your duties or to clear your mind. Thank you. I will definitely do that. As Karina like makes her way walking through the gardens, she can't help but marvel at the beauty that surrounds her. The winter flowers are in full bloom, with colorful petals of pink, purple, and yellow greeting her at every turn. It's hard not to think about how much Roz would probably love this. The gardens are filled with tranquil pools of water, each reflecting the beauty of the sky above. Some even pour off the sides like small waterfalls. There are fountains and even a pond filled with lily pads and graceful koi fish. The air is filled with a sweet scent of flowers and Karina can hear the soothing sounds of birds singing in the canopy far below. So how is Karina feeling in this moment and what is she thinking as she's sort of just like walking through this place? She's feeling grateful and calm and she's happy that like, she has this place, but, like, that everyone in the, I guess, the family has access to this. Like, it seems meaningful. There's an echo. I'll turn myself up too. And she's kind of imagining, like, Ketch and Laszlo, like, coming here on their own, like, playing through the little, playing, playing on the little pathways and stuff. I don't know. She's happy. She likes it. She loves it. That's awesome. <clears throat> and after taking a seat on a stone bench near one of the fish ponds, Marquita says, If the Ravisili told me what happened to you on Dauphine with this Calypso, I wanted to talk to you about it, but I wanted to make sure you had some time to decompress after arriving to Odessa. That family has always been troublesome. Not to that extent, but... Vesely had his fair share of problem with the girl's father when they were younger as well. 
Matthias never tried to kill him. However, as far as I know, at least. Yeah, I was curious about that. Delco, I think Delco mentioned something about them as boys, but I, I wasn't really clear on how close they were. They were actually, I believe, pretty close. It was Matthias, Vasily, and uh, Ramash. They they all had sort of, well, my husband and their fathers agreed on trading the boys around the galaxy so each would sort of grow up in a different uh, biosphere of intelligence. And uh, this caused them all to interact many, many times and... And I believe that for a long time they were friends, but I'm not quite sure exactly what happened. But I, I don't think that that lasted for any longer than their teenage years. Matthias is a bitter man. Interesting. Yeah, I certainly wasn't totally expecting one of the members of the royal family to try to assassinate me, but... You know, I wasn't really sure from the start their motives and, you know, it just kind of concerns me how close Raz seems to have gotten with Cadmus given the circumstances. It's kind of funny. I feel like Calypso, if she really knew what she was doing, she certainly would not have chosen that path. It does seem like she underestimated you. She's obviously a deeply troubled young woman. Her family has always had a chip on its shoulder. Uh, there's no telling what kind of negative influences she's had, but that does not excuse the behavior. I mean, obviously what she did was wrong, and it's important for you to remember that. You and Raz, the things that you've been trained to do... For us, the Odessan family, those are skills and tools for your defense, no matter what their original intent might have been. Aww. <laughs> That's nice to hear. Karina doesn't say that out loud, but... <laughs> <laughs> to hear yeah. from someone... You're not just a weapon, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Marquita. She's like slugs yeah. her in the arms. Like, you're not just a weapon, bro. Yes. A... Yeah. Karina will say, thank you. That means a lot. Well, I mean it. And as does Alexei and as does Vesely. Yeah, she's just kind of moved. I don't know. It's yeah. she's a vulnerable conversation. Yeah. She hasn't had a chance to really... Like, she and Raz definitely don't talk like this. She and Bobby never did. What you experienced there, you are not alone in this. Vesely and I are here to support you. Alexei, too. We'll do whatever it takes to help you get through this. This family loves both you and Raz, and we will be here for you. Thank you feels really good to be back. It's kind of easy when you're traveling so much to, to forget what you have waiting for you back home. She goes, I know that feeling very well. It's it's easy to get distracted and, and forget the important things. Vesely told me about your time on Ashkabok as well, about your conversation faux pas with the Ramash about Darren. Yeah, there's no excuse for that. I, the implications of it could have been much worse. It's all right. I understand how you were feeling. This life, there is a lot of pressure. People make mistakes. It happens. But it's important that you learn from that and be more careful in the future. The words of royals have power, Karina. And it's important that you use them wisely. I'll try. I know you will, dear. Marquita's like, puts on a smile. You're, I have faith in you. But 
you've got s now <coughs> now you've still got three weeks before Vasily pulls you all back into the thick of things during that time I'd like for you to reintegrate yourself with the house maidens after being in the public eye for so long I believe the comfort of shadows will do you some good let it remind you of the value of silence she's stoked on that <laughs> yeah, this is like the best punishment ever. <laughs> yeah, she's like, okay, great. Now I can reset. I mean, it's not like, oh my God, I get to lie around and be fed grapes, but like it's <laughs> yeah, it's like a reset for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like this is like her punishment for that fucking mistake is that like she just has to go do more of what she already like really enjoyed doing. Like I understand. I think that that is for the best good good and there's like a brief yeah. moment of calm as karina and marquita had taken the beauty of the garden but soon karina's golden ear picks up to the sound of footsteps approaching when she turns to look in the direction of the double glass doors karina sees naria maria but i've changed her name to naria open the p it's too close to marquita <clears throat> karina, yeah, <that's> <clears throat> karina sees naria open the pair of doors and enter into the garden She's carrying a set of golden and white housemaiden robes in her arms. Marquita says, Ah, perfect timing. I thought you might want to try them on before you begin your duties tomorrow. Yes, of course. And when Naria yeah. reaches the pair, she nods to both women. Your Highness, Your Grace. Thank you. And Marquita says, On time as always, Naria. Thank you. I've got a picture of Naria. Boop. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, did I did I not give you the Marquita picture? No. Failure. Boop. Oh shit! Sweet. So all okay. the housemaidens have that sick ass gold collar. Yeah, that's cool. It's like fashion forward. Mm hmm. Sweet. Okay. Okay, and then you're welcome, Your Grace. Maria says, "I'm just doing my duty." And you do it well, Marquita says, giving the young woman a, a warm smile. And here you are, your highness, Naria says, handing the neatly stacked robes out to Karina. I hope they fit you well. If there are any issues, please let me know, and I'll make sure to have them adjusted for you. Thank you. And she'll take them. Of course. And then she turns to look at, um... She turn or she goes, of course, your highness. And then she turns to look at Marquise, and she goes, And I have an urgent message for your grace from the city planning department. They need to discuss the construction of a new school in the new colony with you as soon as possible. And Marquise says, Thank you, Naria. I'll see to it right away. And Karina, why don't you go and try on your new robes in the privacy of your chambers? Naria can join you and further, di further discuss your duties. Okay. Well, okay. And sh Naria looks at Marquita and she goes, is there anything else I can do for you, Your Grace? And Marquita says, no, that will be all. And she d dismisses Naria with a wave of her hand. Thank you again, Naria. The better of you may go. And sh Naria says, yes, thank you, Your Grace. Thank you, Your Grace. Uh, Your Highness. And she like kind of gives a, a little bow, bow to the both of you and like turns to walk back towards the doors where she kind of opens the door and then waits for Karina. And as she does that, Marquita turns to look at Karina and she says, He is open, mouth closed. And Karina will say, Ears open, mouth closed. And then what does Karina say? And or, do, or we, we just did that. And then describe how Karina leaves the new royal gardens, which with Ketch and Laszlo in tow. Yeah, she'll probably have to like call for them because I imagine they like just straight up took off when they got in there. Yeah. Lazo, out of excitement. Laszlo drops out of a tree. <laughs> Great. 
Uh, and then she will just, yeah, follow Naria. Okay. Less than half an hour later, as Karina slips the robes over her head, she can't help but smile at how perfectly they fit. The seamstress had done an excellent job of tailoring the robes to her new, slightly taller frame, and they had flowed beautifully around her body, draping elegantly over her curves. The white and gold fabric shimmered in the light, and Karina couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and responsibility as she looked at herself in the mirror. Narya says, They look beautiful on you, your highness. Thank you. They fit perfectly, too. Like Nari is standing near the bed, and Karina sees that her eyes are just kind of wandering around the room and all the bookshelves, the personal items that Karina's collected on her tour. And Karina remembers from like the time that she'd worked with the housemaidens before that Naria had always kind of been fascinated by stories of life on other planets, but because she's a servant of the royal family, she's never really had the opportunity to leave Odessa. And as she's looking at everything, Nari says, Your Highness, may I speak plainly? I have a question. Go ahead. I've always been fascinated by stories of life on other planets. What was it like visiting all those different places? It was interesting. Some of them were very different than Odessa, and some of them were kind of similar. There's really no place like home, but I think I would go back to most of them. There's, you know, everyone has different, you get to meet people with different backgrounds and cultural values, and I'm trying to remember what she, because I think Karina would probably, like, walk over to that bookshelf where she said all of her stuff that she had gathered from her travels and probably pick up like well, she should have written down everything that she brought i guess she'd pick up her baton because she like plays with it the most like quote unquote like she she probably in her room at night just kind of like messes around with it yeah. so she'll pick up the baton and hand it to naria <laughs> say you're welcome to look through, you know, all of the stuff that I brought. She's like, oh, well, thank you. And she kind of like walks over and starts kind of looking at her. Karina's little collection of all of the different things. She like stops at the Mega Surge can and she looks at um, the like jewelry that she got from Dauphine. And she says, these are these are all beautiful. What was the most unique thing you saw or experienced on any of these planets? <laughs> um, <laughs> Do I tell the truth? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Let me tell you about the Triton. <laughs> no, I think she'll tell her, because she didn't grab one, but she'll tell her about the, and I'll do it, but she'll tell her about the, tunnel with all the glowing flowers oh yeah that's a good one so she'll say well when i was i was exploring the ocean of one of the oceans of dauphine and i ended up in this kind of cavern tunnel with a bunch of really beautiful glowing like phosphorescent flowers and they almost seem to like lead a path through the cavern and they, you know, provided light and they're really beautiful. And she's just kind of like her eyes are big and she's like, that sounds, I, I cannot even picture it. Wow. And she kind of pauses. She says, your highness, what advice would you give someone curious about leaving Odessa uh, about seeing what else is out there? I would don't say, leave. <laughs> you're probably safest here. Probably. It's pretty bad out there. But like not if she like kicks someone on accident, gets sentenced to the jungle. 
Uh, well, that's not. They're not doing that anymore. Remember, like it's not as intense. Like, yeah, yeah. I think she would say it really is amazing to meet. Wait, she asked. Sorry, can you repeat the question? She says, uh, "What advice would you give someone curious about leaving Odessa and seeing what else is out there?" Okay, yeah, I would say go for it. I mean, it's travel. The things that you learn from traveling are invaluable and i think that learning how other people live is important and seeing seeing how other people treat each other and what's important to other cultures and places can be different so i would say it's always worth trying to expand your horizons a little bit she nods and she says yes i see and I'm sorry if I'm asking so much. I just, with you joining us for a few weeks, it, it's exciting. I, the others, we all enjoyed working with you after after Smashfall. Oh, don't be sorry. I mean, I can tell you anything you want. Before you left, I remember you were quite nervous about leaving. Did it live up to your expectations? Yeah. I mean, there was certainly enough to be, you know, there was certainly reason for a lot of the nerves. Yeah, It can be hard to try to be diplomatic all the time, but it was worth it. I think Karina would ask her, like, how have things been going in the last year here in Odessa with the rebuilding initiative very busy very busy we have had many many new arrivals i believe that our population count has gone up roughly about seven million in the last 10 or 10 months so there are people flooding in and life is returning um but you know the scars remain seven million off-worlders Yes, over the last uh, about, about 10 months. Many uh, colony ships from the USA worlds, I'm not sure which, uh, but they've been promoting it uh, throughout the city. Everyone knows. Obviously, 7 million people. And this is this like in an effort to get people to help us rebuild? Well... Uh, there is the Richmond colony, um, so we need people to live there. And there have been citizenship initiatives garnished by Vesely and the rest of the royal household for, you know, rebuilding. We were dealt a terrible blow on Smashfall. There's a lot of people. Huh. Well, I'm sure they're very grateful to have you. Open out here. Very I, dedicated. I try, princess. Together, the two young women spent the next hour discussing the responsibilities and expectations of Karina's returning role. The princess was pleased to see that the robes had several newly added concealed pockets, which she knew would come in handy as she went about her duties. She also found that the robes were surprisingly comfortable, despite their formal appearance. By the time she'd finished talking with Naria, Karina felt prepared and ready to begin her duties with confidence and deter determination, just like she approached everything in life. Over the next two weeks, Karina worked alongside Naria and the other housemaidens, performing her duties as she had before the tour, with diligence and attention to detail. She was pleased to see that new concealed pot. She was pleased to see that the new concealed pockets in her robe came in handy as she went about her tasks, allowing her to discreetly carry small tools or notes as needed. Despite the steady demands of her work, Karina enjoyed the opportunity to reconnect with the people of the castle and the city. She was grateful for Naria's guidance and support, and she was happy to see that the young woman was eager to learn about life on other planets, which she would not stop talking about. Karina shared many of their stories as she could. Karina shared as many of her stories as she could 
during their time together, and she was pleased to see Narya's face light up with wonder and excitement as she listened, especially about everything on Ashkabak. She couldn't stop talking about the Golden Tigers. During Karina's time working alongside the house maidens, she had made a concerted effort to conceal her growing fascination with wine from them. She didn't think what she was doing was wrong, but there was a part of her that liked getting away with a secret of her own. She made sure to only drink in the privacy of her bedroom, and she was careful to only have a small amount at a time. As the days passed, Karina found herself feeling more and more at home in her role as a housemaiden. She enjoyed the sense of purpose that it gave her. She knew her responsibilities as a princess would always come first, but she was glad to have this new outlet for her talent and skills. During those two weeks, Ketch and Laszlo were constantly on the go, never seeming to tire of their adventures within the castle and its grounds. They were particularly fond of exploring the royal gardens, which they would chase each other through the flowers and play games of tag, their yips, yaps, and growls echoing through the greenery. The garden's fish pond was another of their new favorite spots. The pair would sit out under the warmth of Heliaros for hours, watching the colorful fish swim through the water, mesmerized by their graceful movements. Laszlo many times tried to catch a few fish, but his paws were just a bit too clumsy for the task. In the evenings, the pair would join Karina in her bedroom. Snuggled up against her, she studied, or surfed the hexanet. Both of them had imprinted so deeply upon her during their time and space that they could each sense whenever she was feeling down, and would always do their best to cheer her up with playful antics. Roll 2d6 to, how m- to see how many nightmares Karina had during those two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So the heavy majority of those two weeks, Karina had nightmares. What was one of them? Oh, my gosh. What was one of the nightmares? I would stay since she's back in Odessa and on Odessa and in the cathedral. It would... She would definitely have a nightmare about Darren's attack and the whole kind of cathedral room business that went down. And I would say it was probably pretty realistic to how the, how it actually happened because like things almost ended very, very badly for basically everyone so i think it was traumatic enough as it is that it could have just been the night of the throne room like she's been surrounded by reminders of that more than she has in a year so i think it would just be the heightened nightmare feelings would be like feelings of powerlessness and being unable to stop darren and is it the exact same are there any changes to like the dream or yeah, I was going to say, at the end, I feel like because yeah, Raz stabbed him with, like, a knife. His, his tonto. Blade, right? yeah, the obsidian blade. So, yeah, I think it would be pretty much the same up to the end, except for when it came down to it, like, Raz wouldn't have had his tonto. So, I think, yeah, it would be a dream about Darren winning that night. And um, and in your mind, like, what does that look like? It looks like Karina, like, because she was behind the statue up on that pedestal. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it would just be Karina's, like, blurry, fading out vision, just seeing Darren on top of Raz. And he kind of like, because he had those wings, so he would extend those like wings out huge, like bigger than life. And yeah, I think he'd rip his throat out with his teeth in the nightmare. And she would pass out and then wake up. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. 
Because, yeah, she's there's no way she's coming home and not <laughs> not thinking about it. No, how could she not? It was terrible. Is the cathedral, like, open? No, I mean, they've rebuilt. I guess I just mean, like, would it would it have become kind of like an off-limits, like, nobody goes there? Or is it, like, not the cathedral, the throne room, sorry, is what I meant. No, no, That's- no, no, no. It's been fully rebuilt, like... Vasily is still a very proud person. Okay. So it's kind of like we did this in spite of what he tried. Yes. Like, let's build it back up. Okay. Yeah, I think she would still probably be avoiding it when she can. I'm sure they've had meetings in there, but. No, 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 no. There's meetings in the offices and stuff. Oh, okay. Perfect. So then, yeah, we can say that she. (laughs) Retcon, retcon. No, I'm joking. Yeah, retcon, (laughs) retcon, retcon. No, no, I just mean we can say that she probably has been going out of her way to avoid it unless, like, absolutely necessary to go in there. No, that's a good idea. I like that little addition. That's that's good. I hadn't even thought about that. That's that's solid. So this is the next scene. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Look at her hair. Look at his hair. I laughed. <laughs> so hard. I, she looks like someone, and he, I can't even, look how big his hand is. Aaron said he looks like a snow peacock. (laughs) That's pretty good. His hand is like as big as his gigantic meaty thigh, like even in the fist. (laughs) Look at his, look at his left thigh though. Look how big it is. Right. And compared to the other one. (laughs) Yeah. 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 No, not a not not a fan. What's Two, like? Four, six, eight, what are ten, the things on his arms? I don't know. <laughs> I think those are just like, uh, I don't know, fucking pump drugs, like adrenaline. Great. Like little oh, yes, adrenaline yeah. patches. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, like twelve, a twelve pack that he's rocking. It's uh. <laughs> It's a thing. It exists, I guess. <laughs> I laughed so. I, I, I almost said that shit to you like three days ago, and I was like, "No, don't do it." Like, also, like the fact that they're both standing in the same. <laughs> yeah, like they planned it. Pose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> I was like, yo, this is a planned pose. Like, Alex a was like, hey, let's take a photo together. And, like, he went and, like, put a camera and he was like, stand, stand, stand like this. Like, just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Also, she had, like, a freaking cantaloupe on her head. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck. They got like. it so poofed up. But, like, it looks like shaved on the side. Like there's just a lot going on. There's a lot going on. <laughs> this is shaved on the sides. Like they could tech they could have the same hairdo. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like if <laughs> if he balled it up at the top, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, I know. I was like laying on the couch. It was like two o'clock in the morning. And I was watching some bullshit and like fading in and out of like sleep as I was making these things and like that shit popped up and I just like fucking lost it. What did you? I typed in like, uh, I, I don't remember ex- the exact prompt, but it, ultimately it was like blonde or platinum haired princess at the gym working out with her older, massively huge, <laughs> huge <laughs> brother. And like, this is what it put out. <laughs> I like that there's like um, an out of focus barbell in the front. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's only got weight on one side. It only has weight on one side. And then the like little radiator in the background. Like what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell it to do that at all. I don't know why this is the gym. <laughs> like. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Great. I, I had many others that were like much better, but I was like, nah. <laughs> Look at his back. Like his back. He's got a hunchback. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, like look he, how tiny his waist is. His waist is tiny, and then his back is like regular muscles. So there's just like a gap, 
or maybe that's his hair. No, I think it's his back because his muscles. He is an odd. Yep. Yeah, that's his back. That's his. Hers back. looks like that too. Yeah, she's yoked out. <laughs> Wait. She can't keep up with him in the gym. He could like run to the sun. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw that like three steps to the sun. He's. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a lot. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's so good. It's so good. Like I, when you maximize it and make it huge, it's almost like an assault on the eyes. Yeah, he is like because he's like taut on yeah, the top. It's so aggressive. And the like, his shoulder looks like a pumpkin. His shoulder does look like a pumpkin. It's huge. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I like his gloves though. And like, look how tiny his right wrist is. <laughs> yes, it's so tiny, <laughs> dude. Her the, wrists are bigger than his wrists. The, his his elbows. His elbows are also aggressively <laughs> muscular. Yeah, like the bones have muscles. Yep. Her elbows are fine. His are just like. <laughs> yeah. Plus, he's got like a horn in the middle of his chest. A horn? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see that. It's just an extra ab, I guess. I think it's a. I think it's a an eleven. The eleventh ab. It's the eleventh ab. His ch- his jawline. Like, look how hard he's clenching. His <laughs> yeah, he's clenching hard. He looks so mad. His widow peak is so widow's peak is so deep. That is <laughs> great. <laughs> Okay, well, that set that certainly set the scene. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alex is about to dribble Karina like a basketball. Oh my god, I believe it. After a few days of working alongside the house maidens, Karina was looking forward to a day off. She'd made plans to go to the gym with Alex and work out, and was excited to spend more time with him without Roz or Radley around. <laughs> Little bird. He exclaimed as she entered the sweatshop, standing up from a bench to give her a hug. Tell me you're ready to get pumped. I mean, not as pumped as you, but pretty ready. And he, like, kind of flexes. He goes, nobody could be as pumped as Alex. (laughs) He kind of chuckles and, like, flexes his biceps. And, like, they're bigger than her head. Right. As you know from that photo. Um, is he's he's seven feet tall? He's seven feet tall, and he's like eighteen years old, in like the right. giant, giant man's body. Uh, I figured that it was time for us to start training again. You've been on tour for a while, and that long in space can weaken us. You're taller, but you look tiny. Let's build you back up, yes? Within reason, I I think. Please don't shatter my body today <laughs> i will shatter what i need to shatter to make oh, you the strongest you will be <laughs> first things first how often have you been exercising lately well uh do you mean since i got back to odessa or just in general in general the tour, uh, since you've been back, just walk me through everything since you left Odessa. I put my exercise equipment on the ship for a reason. You used it many, many times, correct? I... She did. I did. A couple uh, times near the beginning. A couple times near the beginning. And the war games, we were exercising. Yeah. So... That's uh, the dog. I would say she was probably like trying to be fit. I don't know, five, five times a week. Those war games were pretty consistent. Yeah. But nothing like. Sorry, I come out to the freaking dead, and now they're making all this noise. Um, nothing like what probably Alexei does during the day, but she was getting her cardio in with the war games and she probably lifted weights like twice a week. Okay. He's like, all right, let's focus on building some muscle. 
let's get to work. Like, we'll start with some basic work and gradually intens- increase the intensity. Remember, the key is to challenge yourself, but not overdo it. We start slow. Sounds great. There's no better coach than you. Just thumbs up with your pumpkin shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, a pumpkin shoulder. Um, all right, go ahead and roll a uh, strength for Karina. Okay. Alex, a pumpkin shoulder. Hey. All right, all right. Karina quickly feels her muscles burning with exertion, but she's determined to keep up with Alexei's task. Come on, little bird. You can do it. Alexei shouts as he curls 150-pound bars with each arm in sync. You are a child of the sun. You have the strength and determination of a true warrior. Keep focusing. Do not stop. Keep pushing yourself. So he's just, like, screaming. (laughs) Screaming at her. (laughs) <laughs> and she's working out, but he's like screaming at her while he's like curling like massive bars of 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 weights. Yeah, she's gonna appreciate the encouragement certainly because she feels like it's helping her stay motivated. <laughs> I mean, I would be. I'd be like, oh god. Um. <clears throat> Panting and sweat drenched, Karina collapses onto a nearby bench, feeling a sense of accomplishment and pride wash over her. Great job, little bird. Alex a beams and offers her a fist bump. That is what the fuck I am talking about. Show the metal who is the one or show the metal who is the one who is boss. With a big grin, Alex a sits down with his weight bars and puts up a fist to the exhausted girl for a fist bump. It turns into their multi-steeped secret handshake that the pair had developed years before. What does Karina say and or do? I mean, she's going to be doing the fist bump. Yeah. And the secret handshake. And... Yeah, I don't know that she needs to say anything. No, no. In sync. And when the handshake ends, he looks at her and he goes, You know what diamond is now? What time is it, Alexa? Now we run. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karina and Alexei spend the next hour working out in the gym. Ketch and Laszlo keep themselves entertained with a variety of activities. They chase each other around the room, pouncing and playfully biting at each other's tails. Then they try their best to distract Karina and Alexei from their workouts by leaping up onto treadmills and attempting to steal water bottles. But despite Laszlo's mischievous antics, Karina manages to stay focused on her workout. By the time they finish their session, the princess is dripping with sweat and feeling exhilarated. Tossing Karina a bottle of mineral water, Alexei, after wiping his forehead, says, Drink up. Catch your breath. Soon, we will fight. I'm sorry, did you say fight? Uh, Spar. We will spar. Sorry, did you say spar? Yes, I've got some things to teach you. I think you will appreciate them. All right. So she'll try to catch her breath, knowing now that she's going to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they've done, like, little exercises, so. Like this before. So she's, I guess, excited. Nervous. Opening his own oh. water bottle, Alexei sits down on the bench next to Karina. He sighs, and he leans his back against the wall and stretches his legs. He goes, you know, it has been a tough year for me. I wanted to go with you and Raz on the tour, but I had to go through a lot of physical therapy to get back to where I am now. It has not been pleasant. I'm sure that was very hard. It wasn't easy watching you and Bobby go off on your own while I stuck here, but... You're in good hands with Horn and Dash. I had to keep telling myself that. and It did give me time to focus on getting better. So, it was hard, but I got through it. I I mean, I think it, if anything, you're probably, because he's coming with us, right? To oh, yeah. Too? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, she'll say, like, I mean, I don't think you missed much. I think you'll get you know, you'll have better time at Terra 2 than anything that we did. 
I honestly hate Terror 2. It is a... It is... <laughs> it is a dog shit world uh, built on the back of a desert. I don't know why they put it there. I mean, the main city and continent is truly an oasis, but every other continent is a desert. It fucking sucks. You don't like the desert? Have you ever felt sand? <laughs> I... Yes. It's coarse and it, it's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and I hate it! <laughs> and I hate it! Oh, okay. Well, just stay in this, the capital then, maybe? Yeah, I mean, that's the plan. But if, if, if anybody wants to go to the desert, I will say, No, you do that! Oh, so you'll let other people go to the desert. I don't care what other people do. That's fair. So, did you enjoy our little sojourn into the Green Demon? I'm, I'm glad that you finally got to meet Radley. He is a good man, but complicated. Yeah, it was good. I'm still not really sure why you trust him so much, considering he worked with the Reapers pretty closely. Well, that would be because I myself worked with Victor for many years. I understand the allure that the man has. He was, well, odd. He was very charismatic. And in regards to him working with the Reapers, Vesely put him on that squad. So it wasn't even Radley's choice to go with him to begin with. Oh, Radley. <laughs> Radley Boubois. <laughs> Karina watches as Alexei steps in out into the sparring mat and cracks his neck, all his knuckles, and then pops both pec muscles in her direction. All right, that's enough of a break. Stand up. Let's do this thing. In your fighting stance. She'll get in her fighting stance. All right. Alexei's size advantage is immediately overpowering, but Karina is quick and agile. The two begin circling each other each looking for an opening to attack. Remember, size isn't everything. It's all about technique and strategy. You have to use your agility and quickness to your advantage. I'll try. When you messaged me from Bacchus, so excited about your baton, I showed your twirling video to everyone. No. <laughs> they all loved it. Alexei. <laughs> Vesele even nodded once near the end. <laughs> Aww. It got me thinking about the difference in your size, opposed to many of the people you might come across in the galaxy. At first, I thought, I will teach her Sambo. It is a martial art developed by the old Earth Soviet Union for hand-to-hand -hand combat. It combines techniques from wrestling, judo, and other martial arts. It's also all about taking control of your opponent's movements and using their own momentum against them. Your training in Krav Maga is more about survival in a street fight, whereas Sambo is more about controlling and dominating your opponent in a more controlled setting. Both are excellent choices for self-defense, but they have different approaches and focus on different aspects of combat. So... I thought to myself, uh, I will simply combine them into a new form of fighting that nobody <laughs> else knows. Now, what? <laughs> pick up that practice staff and bring me the one next to it. And like, hey. look, looking to her left, Karina sees that Alexei has nodded to a rack of wooden practice weapons on the wall nearby. What does she do? She's gonna go get this, the freaking sticks. Thank you. Thank you. Today we're going to learn Samaga. It <coughs> combines the practices of Sambo and Krav Maga into a single efficient form of combat. Are you ready to get started? You just like made up a whole new way of dance fighting? I am Alexei Taganev. <laughs> I am the master okay. of killers. <laughs> of course right, I did. I'm... Oh, God. He says, of I'm course. Ready. Of course I did. <laughs> of course he did. 
obviously. He straight up created a fighting style specifically for Karina and her guitar. Oh, Karina. Yeah. Great. First, she's, go ahead. I was going to say she's going to follow his directions. Goddamn right. First, let's work on your footwork. Sambo emphasizes quick and agile movements, while Krav Maga is all about staying close to your opponent and using their momentum against them. Combining the two will give you the versatility that you need to take on any opponent, no matter their size or strength. It's more adaptable or fluid than either one alone. It's perfect for the kind of close combat situations we often find ourselves in. How did you come up with this? It was a long process of experimentation and refinement. I spent a lot of time practicing it and testing different techniques. Hours a day, every day. Dawn to dusk. Eventually, I came up with something that I thought would work well for you. I'm really excited to practice it with you and even Raz if he's interested. I think the three of us could really build out this new system and make it into something special. Yeah. And I think Raz would be excited about it too. I mean, he loves like new things and new challenges. So I think he'd be happy to test it out as well or learn it, I guess. Well, let's get you uh, knowledge up on it first before we bring him in. We all know what he is like. We do indeed. Are you ready? I am. Roll initiative. Great. <laughs> Super. Oops. As they engage in combat, Karina tries to use her speed to her advantage, darting in and out of range and striking at Alexei whenever she sees an opening. But despite her best efforts, she keeps finding herself getting overpowered by his superior size and strength. Frustrated, the princess grits her teeth and redoubles her efforts, determined to find a way to defeat the cherub like Hulk. He tries to use her agility or he try she tries to use her agility to outmaneuver him, but even that seems to be in vain. As he is going to go ahead and strike at her. She's going to try to dodge. Yeah, he's, she's going to go flying through the fucking air. His fists are like the size of her body. Uh, uh, go ahead and roll your dodge. Okay. Yeah. So describe how she dodges one of his three strikes. Uh, she's going to, like, I guess duck, but... I think he's going to be able to catch her on the back end of that duck. Yeah. Like if he does like a, just like an open swing, I can imagine it more as like, because it's dance fighting, I can imagine it kind of as like he faints and she, f he, yeah, faints F E I N T S. Right. Yeah. And then she like falls for it and then he gets her on the back end. Bop, bop. Yeah. All right. So what does she do? She's going to try to sweep the leg. <laughs> So she strikes him twice. Go ahead and describe it. She's going to kick at his leg. And she's small, so I don't think she's going to succeed in, like, knocking him over. But I think she's going to get his leg so that his, like, knee kind of crumples. And then she'll <laughs> hit him in the face, I guess. Try not to break her hand. And she has five hit points total? She has five hit points total. So she's down to three. Okay. So then he does the same thing where he kind of like lunges towards her, but then uh, swings it back around. So she's going to try to dodge. Man, it's slow to me. Oh, well, he just knocked her out. All right. So Alexei lunges forward with a powerful punch at the same time as he swipes at her knee with the staff. Karina's is ready for it, however, and easily dodges to the side, using her smaller size and quicker reflexes to her advantage. She counters with a swift quick to Alex's midsection, but he swings the staff into her leg to knock it to the side. As the minutes tick by, sweat begins to bead on both their foreheads, and their movements become more and more labored. Finally, with a mighty roar, Alex lands three powerful strikes to the princess's chest that send Karina stumbling backwards. When she's off guard, he leaps forward and kicks the girl's foot out from under her, causing her to drop hard onto the mat chin first, knocking the wind out of her chest. Rolling over with a gasp, the girl sees a triumphant grin on Alexei's face. Panting and covered in sweat, he reaches a hand down to help her stand up. Good job! 
Keep practicing that and you'll be better than me in no time. That's very generous. I was like, that's a very generous interpretation of what just happened. And he's like, hey, I've practiced this with many of the Bogatier. None of them even struck me once. Your two strikes was the most anybody's ever done. She will choose to believe him. Also, I totally forgot they had staffs. So when she hits him, she doesn't punch him in the face. She hits him in the face with the staff. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. But yeah. So yeah, that's uh thank you, Alexa. I'm glad I got a couple of hits in at least. Yes, you're more talented than you think. That's enough for today though. What do you think? Yeah, I would say so. She like rubs her chin. <laughs> That would have hurt, man. Yeah. Chin boost. Yeah, yeah, she went down hard. <laughs> After tossing Karina another bottle of water from the cooler, Alexei re-racks both of the training batons in their place and gazes through the windows out over the Tri-Cities. Did I ever tell you about my last mission with the wolves, little bird? You didn't. It was a spy mission. We were on Tussle Forge. Attempting to gather information on the PMAC installation. It was not a good mission. We had been betrayed by one of our own and we didn't know it. Things went south fast. Not even five minutes after entering the facility, the place went into lockdown. Separating me from the others. With my comms jammed, I tried to escape. But they knew we were there. And I was forced by enclosing forces further into hostile ter- territory. As the acting field, field leader, Victor made the decision not to send me help. I had to fight my way through more than 40 soldiers. First with my guns, then with my knives, and finally with my bare hands. It is... One of the only times in my life that I have ever felt true fear. I realized then that I was expendable. And the people I had been created to serve alongside did not see me as the family I saw in them. After everyone in my path was dead, I got far enough into the planet's blistering forests that I could be saved. It was Vesely who found me near death unconscious, laying in a puddle of mud. He brought me home safely. We found out later that one of our own members, Alpha, had betrayed us and informed the PMAC that we were coming. The wolves had been created as a joint endeavor by the galactic nations. Soldiers from both the s- soldiers from both sides. Apparently, Alpha, Peter, had been holding his lack of neutrality a secret for the entire time. Sometimes, when I wake alone in the cold of night, I am still there, fighting my way out. I'll never forget the feeling of overcoming such great odds alone. You know why I'm telling you this. I'm so proud of you, Karina, for doing the same on Dauphine. Thank you. That means a lot for you to even consider those to be equivalent situations. I believe they are quite similar. We were both lost and alone, and we had to do what we had to do to survive. And we both came out the other end, no matter the cost. Yes? Yes. Tell me, little bird. We... Our family, yes? I I know that you and Roz had no choice in the path that led you here, but I hope I have been a good brother to you. Have I been there when you needed me? I have tried to be for you what I did not have. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anyone could say any different. Alexei smiles and wraps his arms around Karina, pulling her into a hug. And he says, I know that this year has been difficult for you. With everything that happened on the tour and all the changes that have occurred since you returned, 
but I want you to know that you can always come to me if you need. And I love you, little, little bird. I will always be there for you, no matter what. Thank you. I know I can always count on you. And, you know, it was kind of scary not having you on Delphi. And I think, I think things would have maybe gone a little bit differently, but... Oh, they would have gone very differently. But hopefully, you know, if anything like that happens coming up, we, we got each other's backs. Always. And as the pair embrace, Ketch and Laszlo both jump up and down in the air around the pair, joining in the hug and adding their own licks and purrs of affection. The four of them stay like that for a few minutes, savoring the warmth and love of the family. Before Alexei pulls away like, All right, all right, Alexei Durganev does not cry. The big man sniffles and lets go of Karina. Meet me back here in two days. Same time. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on more Samaga teachings in the meantime. <clears throat> he books it. He books it. <laughs> Karina will laugh and say, has got that ball. Shh. She'll laugh and say, okay, see you in two days. And like, she watches the door close and like seven seconds later, she just hears like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. November 19th, 2387. Her day had been a long one. Marquita, Karina, Naria, and a handful of other housemaidens had worked from dawn through dusk at a new Odessa Royal Food Bank that had only recently been built in Richmond for locals helping to build the colony. The work had been rewarding, and Karina had gotten an up-close and personal look at not only the new city, but many of the faces making it, making it into a reality. As she walked back to her room through the hallways of the cathedral, the girl's feet ached and her stomach grumbled. She couldn't wait to take a hot shower and sink into bed with the smarmels. Upon arriving to her room, however, she saw that she had a message waiting for her on the room's private long com machine. What does Karina say and or do? She's in her room? Yup. Okay, she'll take the message. After hitting the button, a holographic image of Calypso appears before Karina's face. The under princess smiles. Hello, Karina. I'm sure you're surprised to hear from me, but I thought it was time we had a little chat. I've come to realize that there's something you have that I want. Something I've always wanted, but never had the chance to take. Power. Influence. Respect. I believe you can help me get it. Look, I underestimated you. This is clear. In our time apart, I've come to examine my actions and your own and come to the decision that I'm happy things happened the way they did because now you and I see each other in a way that I'm sure no one else ever will. You and I are the future. I have skills that you lack, while you have skills that I lack. I propose a truce. I apologize about our argument. I said things I shouldn't have. As the message plays, Laszlo stands next to Crane on the bed, growling at Calypso while Ketch watches with focused interest from his perch on the grand windowsill. I knew you were smart, but now I know you're a survivor too. I think, if you're honest with yourself, over time you'll see the benefits of being friends again. Think about it, Karina. We could be unstoppable. I hope you're not too stubborn for this. I have a long memory, and I never forget to grudge choice is yours, princess. Make it quickly. 
I have a feeling the future is coming faster than either of us realizes. I'm like pausing the long com. Karina sits in silence for a moment, staring at the frozen image of the girl. What is she thinking and or feeling right now? The freaking audacity. <laughs> Are you joking? I think Haley as me and me being me as Haley as a person would be like, is she fucking got a screw loose? Like worse than what I knew. But I think Karina. The mere fact that she's a 14 year old girl that tried to murder somebody should answer that question. I mean, just meant like worse than Karina even fucking realized. But I think that the things that come to mind specifically are like, A, she's coming to me saying, you have power. I want that. Like, what What do I give a shit? Like, good luck. Have fun trying to get it. I already have it. <laughs> Secondly, the, like, I thought about what I did and what you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I put that one in for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I, Karina doesn't even know what the fuck she thinks that she did because Calypso was rattling off fucking nonsense. Like, I, like. <sighs> this bitch crazy. She's crazy, but. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there was a third thing that I was thinking. Um, the whole, like, I have a long memory. This is only, we got like half, there's still a whole half a message to go. Oh, God. Yeah, she's not done. Um, I feel like, um, um, stop. I feel like. God damn, I still just feel like Karina's opinion of this whole situation is that it can be used, like, politically, but she's not going to fucking do anything on her own. Like, she's not going to go rogue. So she'll she'll hear out the rest of the message, I guess. She's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. I guess she's just probably in shock. Like, what? Who gave her my number? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it. All right, so she'll keep going. All right. The message continues. Oh, I don't know what you did to piss my uncle off as much as you did, but I think he might actually hate you more than I think he might actually hate you. And also, my father had told us how self-absorbed and uncaring the people of Odessa could be, but Raz abandoning Cadmus like that on the first night of his play, my brother was humiliated. I'm not sure he'll ever get over it. He's much more sensitive than me. Think of what you and I working together could do for their friendship. And like Karina listens to the message with a growing sense of unease. Calypso's words are clearly laced with venom, and it's obvious that the girl is still upset. As the message continues, Calypso's tone... Upset about whom and what? She didn't fucking... Nothing happened to her. She's upset that she failed at killing Karina. Oh, fuck off. She's okay. pissed that she got caught. She's that <laughs> little kid who's pissed that she got caught. Yeah. Good. As the okay. message continues, Calypso's tone becomes even more menacing. As an offering, let me give you this. Whatever you did... I hope you understand that my uncle is not a man to be crossed. He has a lot of influence in the Hexa Galaxy, and I wouldn't be surprised if he made sure that you never had a chance to leave Odessa again. You might think you're safe, surrounded by your precious little friends, but you're not. Remember that, Karina. Remember that there are always eyes everywhere, and not only those loyal to my family. Anyways, Cadmus and I will be leaving Dauphine soon to return home to celebrate Sandor with great-grandfather. 
I'll make sure to tell Bobby you said hello. Tick-tock, princess. Give Raz my love. As the message ends, Karina sighs and shuts the holographic projector. Well, no, no, no. The message ends. <laughs> I hate this bitch. <laughs> I didn't even. What's that? It's that Nick Miller thing. I didn't even do anything. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. <laughs> like, what the fuck? She didn't even fucking do anything. Now I'm trying to think. Like, did I do something? I mean, we had like a little passive aggressive, like, bitch fest, but like, she should have handled her shit better. Who in the fucking world ties like a scuba suit to someone when they throw them off the goddamn edge of the fucking, like, dumb? An egotist. Dumb. I feel like the answer. Is to just sh- just just replay this for Vasily later because <laughs> she's threatening like the whole goddamn family. She's threatening Bobby. She's threatening Raz. Raz didn't leave in the middle of his play. Like he can get over that. He left the after party, and she knows why, <laughs> which is the fucked up thing. No, she doesn't know why. She thinks she thinks it's about her. She thinks it's about her killing Karina, but she doesn't know the truth about the rig. Yeah, I guess I just mean like she has a reason yeah. to believe why we would have left. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But uh, she yeah. also said nothing, you know? Like she said it makes sense to Karina, but like she said nothing. She was like, we had an argument. Like that's what she said. She's like, I'm sorry we had that argument. Yeah, but I think, like, it's not like she would project it on the freaking, like, hollow net and be like, exactly. hey, guess what, bitches? Exactly, is. exactly. Like, <laughs> so I think with the with knowing the subtext, Karina could show it to Nero or Vasily and, like, be, like, give it completely plausible. It's also extremely troubling that Delco has an issue with her because why would he have an issue with her? Like, I don't think it's too... He has an issue with her because Feichel told him that you were there. Right. Yeah. Well, what I mean is that I don't I don't want to metagame, but I don't yeah. think it would be such a reach for Karina to be like, well, fuck. Like, if Delco is pissed at me. Then I must have gotten caught on the rig somehow. Right. Well, because she knows that. De- oh, fuck. I don't know how Dash isn't implicated in this immediately. She knows. Yes, she does. She, Karina herself, yeah. knows that Delco was in, did talk to and blackmailed Dash. Yes. So. And, and Cliffs was like, people are fucking on your ass, bitch. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just warned Karina about Dash. That was her fucking, like, that was Calypso's, like, psychopathic way of being, like, here's my gift to you. Fuck. I know. Shut up. Well, see, because I've been feeling, like, honestly, when it came up, when we, and this is, like, not, but when it came up that first night and I went in hot against Dash and then later Danielle was like, well, do you think knowing, like, do you think you need too much? And you just like went off the rails. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't think so. I'm trying really hard to make it like authentic and like not be like, we have a problem with Dash. No, that shit felt real. I still, because she like, you don't sit there and get like, try to get killed. And then Dash just casually being like, well, I was hired to be a spy and Karina not like freak the fuck out. A hundred percent. So, and I don't think Danielle was like accusing me of anything. I think no. she was just genuinely curious. Just asking, yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see how it can be any, like, I think honestly, Karina would think like I need to, t- this is, is it's maybe a cliche, but like, I gotta go talk to fucking like, I gotta 
Like, Feichel is the person who knows what the fuck's going on somehow. Because I can't trust Dash. And Damn, is Karina about to go talk to Feichel? If so, we'll do that on the 30th for sure. Because, like, my plan for the 30th is that the first, it's, like, bookends. So the beginning part of the night is, like, you guys arriving and talking to Vasily and, like, everybody getting set up. And then, like, the last part of the night is set after all of these nights before you guys bounce. Okay. Like, I just, I'm trying to make sure that that, like, tracks. Because, so, okay. She... Walk through, walk yourself through what Karina knows. Right. So she knows that Feichel, okay. She knows that Delco didn't have all the intel. Like that he was in on some of the quietest stuff, but not like the main stuff. She knows that she saw Dash, she saw Dash with Feichel on the rig. Yes. She knows that Dash said that she. She also was, heard Dash, or she heard Feichel telling her men to find Dash. To find her, yeah. Dead or alive. Is that what they said? Okay. Yeah. And she doesn't really understand still what the fuck Dash was doing on the rig. Because they haven't talked about it. No. Like, Dash kept being like, fuck you, not right now. And Karina was like, all right. <laughs> and, and and she said that she kind of admired it. And Karina was like, how the fuck could you admire this? Yes. And then Dash admitted that she was hired by Delco slash Feichel, I think to be a spy against Odessa slash Vasily. And that Dash still has the worms in her. Yep. And that the worms saved her life. Yep. And who knows what kind of loyalty someone would have to people who saved her life. And, well, not really. They kind of tried to kill Oscar, but. And that Dash is just being really fucking shady. Like, she won't talk about anything at all. And, okay, so she knows all of that. And then now Calypso is telling her, Delco is mad at you. <laughs> and you better be careful because they're not, like, you're not going to make it off of Odessa alive. We have spies everywhere. So who's the spy? Also, Alexei just fucking told her a story about a spy. Yeah, I think that is a sensible. <laughs> I think it's a sensible leap. I think it's a sensible leap. I think she'd be like, "What the fuck? I need to talk to Feichel." Okay. I think she would. I think she would decide like, "I need." More. Well, oh god, because she's. <sighs> Well, let me tell you okay. this. We're about we're getting ready to go into the final scene of the night, which is her talking to Vasily. So okay. she can definitely be like, "Hey, can I talk to that bitch?" Like, well, right, because I don't think she would do anything because okay, she's a in the middle of a punishment for speaking instead of listening. B. She understands that actions have consequences. I think better than most fifteen-year-olds at this point. See, she needs to know. I think the big lingering question would be like, just the same way that she's suspicious of like Radley, but then Alexei like fixed it. I think she would still be, she would want answers from Vasily about Dash. Like, yeah. Crane is about so. to have her like silence of the lambs moment. Like, <laughs> Where she like rolls off to the fucking thing and she's like, hello, princess. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't see how how any of that. But like, OK, here's the other thing. How much of how much of Calypso's bullshit is she going to trust? Right. I know. I know. 
When I was writing this, I was like, this is fucking like crazy. Like, yeah, I don't know where she would land. I because his clips are telling the truth. Like, well, that that too. bitch tried to kill her. Like, she but did, at the same time, yeah. she's like, hey, let's work together. So, like, why would she lie and be like, hey, let's work together, unless she's like trying to lure her into another trap? Well, right. Like, is is she Matt Murdock at this point? Like, <laughs> is Karina just little Maddie Murdock? Like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. What do I you, don't know. What do you think? What does your gut tell you? Well, it's so hard because I know that Delco knows. So I want to be like, well, she she read between all the subtext. Yeah. But like, based on how fucking furious Karina was, honestly, I think that she would probably dismiss like 99% of the message yeah. <laughs> and be on the things that she would be like, red flags are... Bobby's name check because that wasn't good. Raz's name check yeah, because that wasn't good. And you're not going to make it off of Odessa. Yeah. It was like a threat, right? Oh, like, yeah. if so she wasn't if, like, you, um, if she said, uh, she said, I wouldn't be surprised if he made sure that you never had a chance to leave Odessa again. Right. So she's like, I am, I am a member of the royal family and I have been threatened. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the security team? <laughs> Honestly. Okay. Actually, you know what? I think, I think I've, I think I've landed on something. I think she would be scared. I think she would be scared. I don't think she has passed all the bullshit that happened. She's had a nightmare last night. She just like is trying to reintegrate herself. And then this message just brought it all running back. And like the message was delivered to her. I have to imagine that people can't just message like casually, like, Oh, I'm going to call Barack Obama. Like they don't No, Yeah, so, she like, did. She has the like cathedral, like it's royalty to royalty. Okay. I was going to say, I feel like to get past, like people don't know that she got this message. I don't know. I think she'd be freaked. The, the intelligence would have record of it, but I don't think they would have had any reason to flag it. Flag it. Yeah, you're probably right. Because only the top people probably even yeah. know. I don't know. I think she'd be freaked out. I think she'd be irritated. I think you can have, you know, people can be more than one thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think she'd be like, what the fuck? And also like any type of Com it's the same stance as I've had the whole time, which is this is above the political implications of this are above me. Like I am a kid. I need help. Yeah. But dash isn't looking good. Like I think this is making it <laughs> like making her suspicions worse, especially because since they've been back, she's still being shady. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen in like the first act, but I can't imagine it's going to be like first... everything that Granny's going to want to hear. No, no, no. Like she's going to be cuz she's so fucking evasive. She is a very like dark-sided character. <laughs> yeah. So I think, yeah, I don't know that this is looking good for anyone, but I do think that she would be like, do we need to talk to Feichel about this? Like, what does Delco know? We have Feichel locked down, so there's not really any harm in, like, talking to her. No, she's not. She's fully locked down. She's like Magneto in a plastic prison lockdown. Right. Like, so I think it would be like a... We need to know, we need to know what she knows about like the we need to know the relationship and dash's involvement and I'm what delco you, knows i'm gonna tell you right now like karina surprising everybody by like rolling in to talk to feichel everyone in the game is gonna be like yo like <laughs> no one's gonna see that shit coming really no one's gonna see that shit coming. i feel like she's got to I, dash I, agree, me. I agree after but you but this is a solo so like you're walking in with extra fucking information or you're maybe not extra information, but you're walking in with extra motivation. So like 
they – I don't think that, like, there's – I don't think on anyone else's mind radar is a scene with, like, Karina talking to Feichel. I just don't think anybody is even on that wavelength. So I think yeah. that they're all going to be like, holy shit. Yeah, I just don't see any other way. Like, she's talked to Dash, Dash Stonewalder. She can't talk to Delco. Yep. Yep. No, I agree and with you. Fully agree with I you. Also, and that's I the also cool thing agree. is if Dash hadn't Stonewalled her, like, would we even be having this conversation? Yeah. Because she, they didn't end up talking about any of it. No. And Because even their, like, duo, uh, they talked about it, and Grizz was like, you should probably talk to the princess. Yeah, that's true. Which means that we can do, like, Karina's Feigl scene, and then Karina can be like, bring me that bitch-ass dash. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, because honestly, like, well, I don't know. I was going to say, I do think, like, Feichel's, like, pride, because she's a fucking proud-ass bitch. Like, oh, yeah, she's going to want something for this conversation. Well, she's going to want something, and I also feel like she, like, it. it's kind of like, Hey, let's send the 15 year old in. Like, how could you not be insulted oh, by that? She'd be, oh, for sure, dude. So I just think that this is like a good, I mean, I don't know. I think, I mean, you're going to be 10 steps ahead. But in my rationale, I think that like there is something to be said about. <laughs> I, I think it's very honest for who Karina is becoming, which is yeah. very much a, all right, fine, I'll do it myself type character. Yeah, and I think she can use her, like, oh, I'm 15, and I'm just a kid. Like, you, she knows, I think Michael knows a little bit, but she yeah. doesn't know the extent. No, 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 for sure. And, like, if it, it also, if she pulls that shit, then it's, like, it shows immediate growth from Dauphine, where Calypso was, like, you need to stop fucking wearing yourself on your fucking sleeve. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So I think in, in, conclu in conclusion, she would be irritated and frightened and be like, well, I need to take this to Vasily and talk to him about it because obviously like this isn't good. Okay. And she's nervous too, because like, what, what does that mean? And did she get made? You know, like yeah. she doesn't think that anyone knew and she probably told him that nobody knew. And now she's getting information from a sociopathic attempted murderer. Holy. That Maybe something did go down. Cause what happened? How did they, how did. What would she, what would she like? What kind of questions would she even want to talk to Vasily about? Well, and now I'm trying to remember how they even knew. Didn't da Oh, it was, fu it was fucking dash. She said it. She said that I was on the boat or the rig. Okay. Yeah, it was Dash. She told me. He said it. Yeah, it Point was. Blank. It was Dash. Fucking A. Okay, so she's not even wrong. <laughs> no. It's just Calypso <laughs> literally blundering yet again yeah. into her fucking people's plans. That's twice now. <laughs> okay. Is, not, is that not perfect? It is. Like, Calypso keeps fucking her own people's shit up because she's an egotistical narcissistic maniac. Yeah. So with Vasily, she would want to know if he preferred for her to like accept the truce or not. Um, because, and the only reason, cause I'm not trying to like pass the buck on the decision. I think it is true that like, she would understand that like, giving a big fucking middle finger to one of the Kavindian royals is not a good idea. And she has a sinking suspicion that it's probably in everybody's favor for her to continue to pretend to play nice, but she's not going to fucking do that unless she's told to. Um, <coughs> and I think she would just want more information on like, what Vasily's experience is with Delco because with Marquita talking about how like, Oh, they didn't really like him and the brother 
kind of were at odds more than Karina knew before tonight. She thought that they were just like palling around. So she, there's, I think there's like a general vague understanding that like the history between these two families is a lot more than just her like little feud with Calypso. So I do think that she has like the awareness enough to be like, well, I can't send her like a picture of Alexei giving the middle finger. <laughs> in that or fucking, you know, who would though? Fucking Laszlo. <laughs> he would do it on his own. I'm prompted. I'm going to actually go ahead and tell you that he does. Oh, great. <laughs> the second Karina walks out of the room, he double he double middle fingers a, a photo and sends it back to Calypso. Great. That's That doesn't happen, but it does happen. The, like, fate of the fucking galaxies down to a little red panda. I'm just, I'm thinking now that, like, I, what I'm concerned about is being responsible for basically getting Odessa like kicked out of its own uh whatever it is it's not a treaty but like their side of USOS like formation and the stress of that is now very troubling <laughs> because Karina has stepped in some shit Yes. And she didn't even mean to. And like, what's Vasily going to do? Like, this is just bad. <laughs> it's just not good. He's going to rue the day. Hi, buddy. No. He's going to rue the... He's going to rue the day. He should have just stuck with Raz and Bobby. <sighs> Anyways, that's where we've landed, I guess. Okay. Oh, shit. This is not imposing or intimidating at all. <laughs> As Karina's adopted father and ruler of Odessa, Vasily commanded respect and demanded the best from those around him. In the time that she'd known him, the man had exhibited strong leadership abilities and a propensity for justice, but he had never been particularly openly emotional with the girl or with Roz. Even after the events of Smashfall and what had happened with Darren, the king had spent so much time in recovery that by the time he'd gotten out, the three children had fallen into their roles working for the crown. There had been few family dinners, but those usually consisted of either Alexei, Roz, or both talking everyone's ear off, as Vasily simply sat back and listened, providing little more than a random head nod or wry smile. The opulent golden door to Vasily's study stands tall, adorned with intricate carvings of the sun and sparkling jewels of the stars. The door itself is made of heavy, solid gold with a thick handle of polished silver. As Krina approaches, she hesitates for a moment, taking a deep breath before finally knocking. Soon after, she hears the king's stern voice call out from inside the room, Come in. She'll go in. All right. With a soft click, the door swings open, revealing the grand study beyond. As she opens the door and steps inside, Karina can't help but be awed by the sheer opulence of the room. The walls are adorned with gold leaf and the heads of various Odessan predators that Vasily had hunted with the green, within the green demon over the years. To her adopted father, these were symbols of skill and love of the hunt as a warrior. Vasily himself is seated at his desk, his piercing blue eyes fixed on Karina as she approaches. Despite his age, he's still an imposing figure to the young girl as he radiates strength and confidence. Sit down, my dear, Vasily says, gesturing to a chair in front of his desk. What have you come to discuss? I have a question. Not this is not this is Haley. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> so this was written intentionally after the Calypso thing. Like, was there something else that we were supposed to discuss? Yes. Or there is something there, else. There. Yeah. He's he's gonna talk to her about something else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess because I'm trying to 
I don't want to say anything that we would have already gone over last time. So I think it's probably safe just to go straight in with the message because yeah. he already knows yeah. everything that went down. Yeah. Okay. So she will say, I received a very startling message earlier this afternoon that I wanted to show you so that we could, so that maybe you could offer me some insights about it. And she'll like play the message, I guess, through her sliver. Uh, from the, me the message from Calypso. When the message is over, he like sighs heavily. And he's just like, what is this about? Well, he knows that Calypso tried to kill her. Right. So I think she or would no, say, he, he says, he says, why specifically did you bring this to me? What is it about me you want it? What is it about it you want me to know? I want you to know that this obviously is not an issue that's just going to be going away. And I... I feel like I need guidance on how to proceed with Calypso, given the fact that she had, they have, the Covinians have Bobby on their planet. And she seems to be opening, openly threatening us and our family. But with the vote coming up. I'm just not sure whether I should tell her that we, that I'm willing to work with her or not, not respond or I just, I don't know what to, how to go from here. And he kind of looks at her and he goes, I have two questions for you. The first, do you believe that this girl would actually kill Bobby? And my second question is, do you think that she would succeed over his skills? Mm. Have you told him about her yet? Told Bobby about Calypso? Yes. No. I worried about the security of sending a message like that. That is a good idea. There are ways. We have intelligence on Kavinda. I could arrange for one of our people keeping an eye on Bobby of which there is an entire team to get the message to him from you if you were concerned about his safety. Oh, man. Are you about to get, like, 12 fucking special security ops dudes just wiped? Me? <laughs> By sending Wait, what? message. Oh, God. Yeah, well, right. Like, I don't... Okay, A... Okay, this is me. Sorry, I'm a verbal processor. I have to talk this out. So, A... The two questions. Would she actually try to kill him? And B... Do you think she could win? Well, I don't... Bobby is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but like she wouldn't okay I don't think Calypso would like actively go after him like herself but
but I don't know that that necessarily means that he is safe. But Bobby's a goddamn blabbermouth. So is it even safe to tell him? I don't even think it's safe to tell him. He tells everybody everything. And he does not think before he speaks. So I guess, fuck. I guess, I mean, we could, I, I guess I'd be comfortable sending him a message, like telling him that he needs to be careful and that he needs to remember that it's Odessa and loyalty above all else. But I don't know that she would necessarily want to tell him like, yo, this bitch tried to kill me. <laughs> Because also Bobby is unpredictable and he could be like, oh, well, then I guess I need to take care of that for Karina. <laughs> one of <laughs> the, is, yeah, one of the things, one of the things that, yeah, one of the things they learn on the 30th in the first part of the night is that like, basically they got a message from Kavinda that's like, hey, the weather's too shitty. Bobby's not coming. Cause like, no! yeah, yeah. And this is after that. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Oh fuck! And then, so as she's as she's kind of working through this, uh -huh. he says to her, "And in regards of if you should take Calypso up on her offer, I leave that up to you. It is necessary to maintain relationships with potential allies, even if they are not necessarily friends. Calypso." is the daughter of our enemy, but she is also a member of the Royal House of Govinda. It would not do for us to completely sever ties with her, especially while Bobby is there, as you yourself have said. It is also important to remember your own priorities and goals as a princess here. Do not worry about appeasing or working with an adversary. Instead, use how figure out how to make her work for you. It is a delicate dance, but if you do it correctly, you will further Odessa's interests. Keep things cordial, but distant. It may be difficult for you, but it is necessary for the sake of Odessa. Good point. Good point. I think that she is absolutely satisfied with that answer. I feel satisfied. It's hard when you're a kid and you're like, I just want to fist fight this person. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think she needs the, like, blunt, like, no, fucking do your job. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why tonight's called the weight of loyalty. Yeah. So I think she'll say thank you. That That really helps me understand the path forward. My other concern about this message is her Calypso's subtext regarding her uncle. I'm worried that Delco may have more information about the knight on the rig than what we originally believed he did. I could see through the subtext that you might see that as well. Tell me, what is it that you are worried about? Do you believe that you were compromised on the rig I did absolutely everything I could to avoid that happening but I am worried that it did occur we will deal with this when it comes if that is what happened if they have evidence of you being there it is essentially mutually, mutually assured destruction because it was their rigs they did not exist while Odessa was running things. So whatever happened there, for them to use it politically against us, they would be throwing themselves under the bus. I don't believe that we should worry too much about that part of things. How he might attempt to use it against us in other ways, that I will need to think about. I encourage you to do the same. Yeah, I feel like she has a lot to think about. 
<laughs> yeah, tonight I told you the weight of loyalty. Well, it's a good point. I'm kind of feeling like, why didn't I think of that? But it is a good point. Like, that they weren't even supposed to fucking be out there. Right. But it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like what is Dauphine to these people? Like nothing. Right. Like so it's it is I I think he's right in terms of like the micro scale of like well fuck, we were both doing shit we shouldn't have been doing, but like I guess something that I will ha- like she'll have to consider slash I will have to consider is like following to its conclusion what the not what like knowledge of her being there would even mean yes. like, does it doesn't here yes and i think it's more damning that like you guys do have feichel's f- stuff too so it's right. like it's like a war of like okay yeah but i still think that karina would be like who like what how how like she, cause she's proud too. And she's like, I did everything I was supposed to do. Yeah. Like, how do they know? So what would she say then? I think she would say, I understand. And I agree. But it is still troubling to me. The circumstances under which they came to have that information. And I, I'm interested in digging a little bit deeper into the events of that night to try to put some more of the pieces together. What did you have in mind? Well, I'm not going to have any conversations with Delco anytime soon. And I don't, really feel like I can trust Dash. She's not a Veronica Dash. She hasn't told me anything about why any any kind of like believable truth about why she was there that night. And I think the last person to talk to about this would be Dr. Feichel. And I think it might be helpful if I tried to interrogate her. We have had the doctor in solitary since you arrived. She has been fed very little food and even less water. I have a deep dislike for anyone involved in the conclave that she is a part of. So we have yet to interrogate her ourselves. I could consider this, but you would need to spend a couple of days with licensed marshals and interrogators to understand their techniques better. Because if you're going to go in there and speak with this woman, know that you're essentially walking into a tiger's den. She's very intelligent. I have no doubt about that. I would appreciate any assistance that can be offered. I think this is an interesting idea, Princess. I appreciate the initiative. He's like, uh, I'll talk to the head of military services and schedule something. I'll send somebody to your room tomorrow that can walk you through the steps of what you'll be dealing with. Thank you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to gather additional information about what happened on Delphine. And he like opens up his drawer, like a drawer on his desk and pulls out this like long, thin carved golden pipe with a bag of bright purple tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> For a few Most casual he's <laughs> ever been. For a few moments, there's a silence between the pair as Karina watches vastly, gingerly and carefully pack the bowl of his pipe. After he's finished, he puts the bag back into his desk, closes it, and lights the pipe. Three long puffs he inhales before finally blowing it up into the air above their heads. He lifts his crystal glass of bourbon that Karina had been side-eyeing since sitting down and says, This is an important discussion. Would you care to join me for a drink? 
I would say that after all this, you've earned a small glass. This feels like a trap. <laughs> it's, it's a trap. It's no, I I mean, she's going to... After that say, stressful last conversation? I was going to say, she's going to say, like, she's on edge. So she'll say, um, I would like that very much. Thank you. She also knows it's like bomb ass liquor. He's not drinking like bottom shelf. Oh, well, just just listen to this. Oh, God. <laughs> Vasily's private bar is truly a sight to behold. A nearby wall is adorned with rows of shining golden shelves, which are all stocked with a wide variety of spirits and liqueurs. There are bottles of fine whiskey, vodka, gin, and rum, as well as more exotic offerings like Agrin a rare and expensive blue liquor made from the fermented nectar of a rare type of flower found only on the planet Ashkabak. The bar itself is a work of art made from a single piece of polished dark wood that had been hand carved with intricate designs and symbols. On top of the bar sits a selection of crystal glasses, each one carefully chosen for its unique shape and size. There are glasses for whiskey, glasses for vodka, glasses for champagne, and even a few more unusual options like the traditional tulip-shaped glasses used for sipping on absinthe. In addition to the spirits and glasses, Vasily's Bar is also stocked with bottles of bitters and syrups, as well as a collection of mixers and garnishes. There are shakers and strainers, ice buckets and tongs, and even a small selection of rare and expensive ingredients like truffles and caviar. What does Karina say and or do? So like- oh, she's like shaking the shaker, like, back <laughs> in the bar, excellent. <laughs> No. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> Actually, she has Laszlo make her. No. Um, what does she say or do when she sees the crazy amount of shit behind the bar? She will. Uh, she'll ask him what he's drinking. He raises up and he says, this is a grin. So she'll pour herself a small glass glass of that, I guess. If he's like letting her pour it herself, yeah. Yeah. And she'll like, yeah, use a the same. She'll try to find the same type of cup that he has, and okay. pour Which... about maybe like half in the cup of how much he has in his. Okay. And when she like, so the agron is in like a crystal decanter, and when she uncorks it and it air touches it, it starts to like glow, like it's phosphorescent. Well, and then after she, she pours see. it, she pours it and tops it back. By the time she walks over and sits down at the chair, the glow is faded to like the normal blue again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says, while you're here, we should talk about the vote. We should talk about Terra too. For what I've put into place, to have any chance of success, it is of utmost importance that Odessa present a united front with the allies we have remaining. There are 16 voting positions. Solemnikar, Bacchus, Arcane, Ashkabak, and Kavinda all have voting leaders. I believe that my voting partners holding the USA seas from the planets Ibzorian, Teratu, Kivala, Theabamine, and Udenorath will vote with us. I think I can count on the support of Teratu and Kivala. What is Karina doing, or how is Karina doing on the drink? What does it taste like? It's made out of flour, you said, it's, right? Uh, it's fermented, like... fermented uh, fruit from Ashkabak. Oh, fruit. Okay. I think. Nect- yeah, the fermented nectar of a rare type of flower. So it's like fermented honey. I was going to say, yeah, it probably tastes like honey, but there's, because it's a flower, I would say it probably has like. I remember when. Cause like mom and dad's honey was always different, but the last batch that they made like tasted like oranges. I think it just kind of tastes like whatever pollinators like. Whatever. So That's awesome. I would say it probably tastes like, 
like a very fresh, beautiful Christmas orange, Sandor orange. Roll with, of stamina. With honey in the in the the mouth the aftertaste or whatever. Oh god. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. It immediately starts hitting her. Like it's stronger than anything that way stronger than the wine. Um, and he continues talking. While you were gone, I hosted each of their leaders for a time. Both seemed very supportive of Odessa and our cause. The overseer of the Appamine took more effort to sway, but in the end, I presented a strong case. As for you, Denorath, I am not sure. Their leader, as she has always done, was more interested in avoiding conflict. I plan to speak with her further in person on Tether 2 before the vote. If I can convince her of the importance of our cause, the danger of the Reapers, and the potential dangers, or the potential further dangers of not acting against them on the BMAC, she may be willing to support us. To succeed, my motion needs nine votes. With the support of those planets, I have six. The pipe finally done. Vasily sets it down on the table and leans forward through its lingering cloud of smoke to look at his adopted daughter. The fate of the Hexa Galaxy rests on this vote, Karina. It's important that we have done everything that we can to make sure it goes in our favor. Your diplomacy and political outreach from your door could have been the thing that helps us make that happen. So tell me, which of the planets you visited do you think will be loyal to our cause? Oh my god. <laughs> I know! I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Salamnikar, Bacchus, Arcane, Ashkabak, and Kavinda are the options. I was going to say, like, Ashkabak, I would say. Oh. Wait. That's it? So, okay. Bacchus... Those are the five that have voted, that have votes. That we don't, like, know for sure. Those are the five that have votes that you visited. So, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, all of those are in the Kill Slayer quadrant. He was talking about planets that are saw planets that were like, I think the USA, these, these USA votes, I think we were going to get. But, okay. but But you guys covered the Kill Slayer. So, like... These five are the Kill Slayer votes. So, like, which of these five do you think are going to vote with us? Which is Salamnikar, Bacchus, and Arcane, which were all on the PMAC side, uh -huh. and Ashkabak and Kavinda. Okay. Well, just based on her diplomacy, I think Ashkabak would vote with us. Which puts the vote for you guys at seven. And we need nine. Yep. Okay. Hollis is Bacchus. I was gonna say we're doing. We're not getting Hollis. He, I mean, it's more. If it wasn't Morgan, <laughs> which one was Arcane and Salamander? I, I think if it comes down. To Hollis being the deciding factor, I don't think there's any fucking reality where Morgan doesn't use that as an opportunity to like be the be the one that like saves the day and also try to like weasel Vasily under his thumb. Saves the day like doesn't no, declare saves, or saves does. the day by doing it to because he he wants to be he wants Hollis to be king of the pirates. And I was like, bitch, that's fucking Shay. Like, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. But, like, he wants Hollis to be a vastly level character. Oh, okay. Okay, so Ashkabak, I think, is in. Unless the Ramash was like... But I, no, I trusted him. Salamnikar was the... Was that the... I can't even remember who the leader is of all these. So Lamnikar was where she was in the hot seat. And some people were on her side, but not all of them. Considering that Morgan was playing most of the people. <laughs> and then 
So we need two more. And then Arcane was, can you pull, can you put the map up yep. so I can see? Cause this is going to take me a minute. I don't remember a lot of stuff. We've done so much. <laughs> Okay. So Kavinda, Ashkavak, Bacchus, Arcane, Salam, and then Maxim. Yep. But the five planets out of that list that have seats are Salam, Nikar, Arcane, Bacchus, Ashkabak, Kavinda, and Odessa. I see. Okay. So Salam, Nikar was the hot seat. Arcane was the helium planet. So that was where we did the, um, like the recon to see where they were sending their shit. Right. Yep. I think. So I don't even know if she met with anyone. They kept her at arm's length on Arcane for sure. Well, that's see, that's this is the issue because like Ashkabak was really the first one where she was like, "Oh my god, people like me!" Like she didn't. Hollis, she I think she, like she kind of like spent a little time with Hollis. She did. He was a fucking creepo though. He was terrible. I think. I think, honestly, like, and I'm sure Vasily is aware of this, but I think if there's anything else to be done regarding Bacchus, I think it would be giving Hollis just basically a bribe. Like, I don't know that his loyalties lie with any particular person or place or I mean the war can be really good for criminals he I would say he nods. he's listening so I think there is still a way to swing that vote and with Kavinda dude think of that like it's so real. Like, they go through all this fucked up shit. Dude, can you think of how pissed Dash would be? Like, they go through all that, and then, like, Kavinda and Odessa vote together. Like, <laughs> dude, like... Really, well, I was... Reading the book, your people would just be like, oh, my God! Like, if that ha I don't know if it's gonna happen. I'm just saying. So they... So she shouldn't angle after Kavinda? No, I mean, I I, I think that, like, if she... If, if if her goal is like let's go after fucking Bacchus and Kavinda, then that's the goal. Like I don't give a fuck. Like that if that that's tight. Like that pushes them to their nine, which is like that's like an insane like he just he did just tell Karina though, he was like, Yo, think bigger with, with Calypso. So like I mean Well, right, and like if there is no if there's a war effort, it's a lot of people who might end up in um, some kind of position to be like cut apart and experimented on. People go missing in wars. People get hurt. They love experimenting on people. I don't know. I think there would be incentive for them. They're terrible, but like as me being like, well, Odessa kind of. <laughs> I mean, Darren was a like a creature of our own making. Um, I don't think that. Okay, so I don't think that Karina would think that like. Okay, yeah, like let's twist this whole. Calypso thing to our advantage because Calypso doesn't have any actual like real well as far as she's aware like real say because she didn't even 
know about all the crazy shit that was going on on Duffin. But... Was Delphine the only planet that like Odessa was kind of like, hey, you guys are our little friends and that Kavinda like took over when Darren's attack hit? No, it was also Drenus and Relagog. So what if we like offered <laughs> some kind of like I mean, you can't bargain a planet, but like if Odessa, because so what we saw on Kavinda was that, well, see, okay, hold on. I got to think about this because Karina saw that people were, some of them were still like Odessa strong and some of them were still, were like, no, fuck Odessa. Right. But if... But, like, did the mirrors even give a shit? Because what I'm thinking is that we could be like, okay, well, let's pull out, like, say that we're not involved in, in one of these other planets. Like, Kavinda, have, you can have it. Like, but then I'm like, well, Kavinda has it already because right. Odessa did get pretty fucked. And it's only a bargaining chip if the mirrors knew about the resistance and they definitely shouldn't know about the resistance. <laughs> It's not like we can be like, hey. <laughs> We're going to throw our own people under the bus here. Right. But I don't know what else they could offer them. Like, Because I don't see Kavinda folding unless it's like a, it's the same as Hollis. Like you have to. Yeah. But war is very profitable. I don't. Vasily nods, like, taking all of this in, and he's like, I agree. I've had all of these thoughts as well. I'm glad to see that we're on the same page. I will consider what must be done with Matthias and the other Mayors. But honestly, well done, Princess. Your insights are valuable. It seems that we can count on the support of at least one of the planets, perhaps even two. Or maybe three, if we play our cards right. Thank you for your help in this matter. From the reports I've read from Commander Torn, your leadership during the tour was invaluable. You have done Odessa proud. Thank you, that means a lot. And thank you for, for including me in this conversation. It's, it's an honor. You've shown much growth. I have read all of the reports that you have sent during your time gone, as well as those from Torn and Raz and the others. Everyone seems to agree that you found your place where it needed to be. I'm glad to see it. Thank you. I take my duties very seriously, so. What happened with Darren? My family's my family's legacy has never come so close to being destroyed. I regret what happened with him deeply. Bringing you all here, continuing your training as spies, as weapons. The boy was right. I was invariably using you all in the same capacity as people I consider my enemies. His judgments against my city, though diabolical and insane, had merit, I would admit. The boy won his point, that is for sure, and in doing so, almost crippled everything I hold dear, everything my family has been building. There was a part of me that was concerned before sending the three of you out on this tour that I had overlooked the same concealed hatred within one of you. And I am deeply proud to have, to have that concern erased. From what you have said about Raz's growth, his connection with the people, 
his outlook on planetary friendship. I believe the boy learned more from his father than he thinks. I... I agree. Yeah, I think. I believe. I think he's, he's grown a lot. With your approval of the plan of this plan, I th I'm going to bring the boy along with me as an envoy to the Galactic Nations. I'd like him to see what we're fighting for, but also against. There is no truer sight of political strategy and callous discussion than those held behind closed doors, such as these. Understand this, though. You not being involved is not a punishment. After the work you did on the tour, you will be with us as well. It is important to me that the leaders of the galaxy see the faces of both of my children, that they see how strong we are, even after the odds we have faced. For you, however, I believe Terra 2 holds another path. Odessan intelligence confirmed as recently as your departure from Dauphine that both of your parents are living locally within the Crystal Heights district of downtown Lunar Falls, one of the mega hubs of Terra 2. She's going to take a... She's forgetting that she, like, got knocked on her butt from her first sip of that drink. She's going to, like, reach for it <laughs> and, and take another drink. And he sees that, and he says, I know that finding out about your parents has been a difficult journey for you. First, the startling revelation of who they were and what they did, and then only recently with our uncomfortable discussion with Roz the other day. Spies within Odessa High Intelligence have confirmed that both of your parents are currently working in a scientific nonprofit called Frozen Hope. They are studying the effects of cryosleep on the terminally ill, attempting to overcome cryopod sickness. They are on a team of eight scientists and medical specialists in cryogenics, biology, and medicine. It sounds like they are making significant progress in their research. Raz against his own will, faced his past. I struggle with my past daily, but I move forward by facing what I lost. Now you do have the opportunity to do so. If you choose to visit the Montero too, I will understand and send Alexei with you for support. It is important to me that you are able to heal from any wounds in your past, just like we are. You will find whatever closure you can before joining us for the countless thoughtful or thoughtless, inane, and stupid political dinners that will be held after the after the vote. There will be many days of food, too much. I appreciate the opportunity to make that journey. I think it'll be very useful for me. He nods. He walks up, or he gets up from the desk, walks over, puts his hand on his shoulder, and he says, I know that this has been a lot for you to take in, but I am grateful to call you daughter. Whatever happens if you meet them, know that you will not, or know that that will not change. You will always have a place here. Take some time to think about what you want to do, whether it's visiting your parents or joining us at the Galactic Nations vote. The decision is yours. I will support you no matter what you choose. Wait, is he asking her to pick right now? No, or? he says he's you got time. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Because... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, he said, take some time to think about what you want to do. Okay. So she'll just say like, thank you. I, I really appreciate being given a choice. And he says, we leave in three days. Marquita is aware. 
tomorrow will be your last day working with the house maidens. Afterwards, take the remaining time for yourself. Everything we've been working for will soon be here. I understand. Good evening, princess. Good evening. And she will not, she's not going to, because she's trying to be subtle, she's not going to like slam the rest of her drink. <laughs> she might, I guess if she poured half of what he had, is it, what is it, rude to not? She'll like timidly, I guess, drink, take another sip because she doesn't want to waste what he gave her. And as she gets up to leave the room, on her way back to the bedroom, how does she feel and what is she thinking about? She feels... Excuse me. She feels like that conversation kind of lifted the weight of her concern about the Calypso message like off of her because the weight of a year's worth of work uh, is a lot heavier. And she's nervous about the vote, obviously, because it was like the whole freaking point. She's also, I mean, I can't believe that he, he's got to, I guess, uh, he, he, Vasily has to have, I guess she's probably thinking he has to have more assurances about the outcome than, or not assurances, but like more in have more influence than just like this little diplomatic tour that they went on. So she's like, well, he did say that like, while you're gone, I talked to like the leaders of five other planets. Right. So she's trying to be like, I think she's trying to let go of the notion that it's all on her. The Calypso thing was just kind of like a panic to like, oh my God, what do I do? I have to figure this out. I have to do this. Oh my gosh, wait, I have someone I can talk to about it. And then talking to Vasily was like, oh, that thing doesn't matter. We're still trying to do this huge thing. But as she's leaving, she is kind of settling into the comfort of this isn't all on me all the time. We're all a team. And I am happy to try to help out wherever I can. But because like he told her straight up, like she doesn't even have to go. So it's just kind of like a weight, like all of the weight from earlier that day. And tonight, I think, has been lifted a little bit. I think she feels more comforted and she's nervous that she's like knows where her parents are and she saw those like horrible videos. It's a lot. She's feeling a lot. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot. It's a lot, yeah. How could she? How, she can't just walk out with like one single thought. Like, it's like, okay, Calypso, who cares? Okay, we got to get the war going. Wait yeah. a second. My, he knows where my parents are. Oh my God, I might just go see them. Alexei is going to be with me. What if I don't make it to the vote? And then the realization of like, well, what if I don't make it to the vote? Like, yes, yeah, so she's that's just nerve wracking. All over the place, all over the place. Just all of it. Like, there's just too much. What does she do when she gets back to her bedroom? She drinks. What does she drink? Her wine, her stash of wine. And yeah. she, it's only been like a week, right? Or three weeks. It's been three weeks. Three weeks. So she's still like a baby drinker. Yeah. So okay. she's still moving through her sweet sweet wine okay. and i'm sure that honey orange thing like because she was pretty tipsy i would say yeah yeah, yeah 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 so she's she's you know when you get tipsy and you're like i am ready for more like that so she goes about. back to her room and gets drunk then kind of yeah okay. i would say she definitely gets drunk and that is where we will end tonight as we oh, gosh. pick back up on december 30th <laughs>